I just wanted to give uh, uh, the fight a little bit of American West Coast flair. I'm T Street Controversy, and this is T Street Controversy Live, and I cover boxing. I hope that Billy Joe Saunders gives Chris Eubank Jr. the schooling. But it all depends on one thing, ladies and gentlemen, just one thing. And that one thing is if he's going to hold it out. If he can go to distance. That's two things, actually. What I'm saying is this. You got a Eubank Jr., right? 18 at all with 13 KOs. The son of the fame and acclaimed Chris Eubank Sr. If you don't know who he is, he was one of the pioneers of the 168 pound division. Long story short, if you don't know him in America, he's big shit over there. And I'm not calling him shit, but if you, you should get what I'm saying. So, what I'm trying to say to you is this. You have this kid who has been blowing through his opponents, but yet you don't know who his opponents are. Whether you're over there in the UK or whether you're over here in the States. Whether you're up in goddamn Canada or Antarctica, or whether you're down in Sydney. People don't be knowing who you bank junior opponents be. So you gotta look at the other side of the spectrum. 20 and 0 with 11 KOs, Billy Joe Saunders. You look at Gerald Fletcher. Gerald Fletcher at that point in time was 12 and 0. Gerald Fletcher is a very highly accredited amateur. He beat a star, Adonis Stevenson in the amateurs. He beat somebody else. I can't remember who. But long story short, you may know him because he fought Danny Jacobs. And Danny Jacobs just ran down on him. Now, it's been a bad year for Australian fighters. Right now, Jared Fletcher is going to be taking on um, 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 Daniel Gill. You know, but moving on, I'm trying to keep it on uh, Billy Joe Sanders. The point I'm trying to make is this. Billy Joe has been the distance. Billy Joe has um, overcome adversity. We don't know who Chris Eubank Jr. is. We don't know who he is. Now listen to me as a boxing fan. It's not that I'm not a Chris Eubank Jr. fan because this is one of those situations that where American fans, they say, oh, you always hating on the black fighter. No. No. I, the way I pick is through experience. Now I know that Eubank Jr. can fight. Now, think about this. You know the showboating that Eubank Jr. does when he fights all this? You think he's going to be doing that against Billy Joe? Exactly my point. Do you think he's going to be doing that against a Gennady Gennadyevich Golovkin or Matt Vay Korbov or Andy Lee or Jermaine Taylor? Remember, he's a 160-pound fighter. This fight, Omar, um, Omar Ciala, he said he took the fight because he wanted to show people he can make 160. I agree with him taking the fight, even though Billy Joe Saunders offered him 20, offered him 20, 20,000 pounds not to take the fight. And if you don't know, let's talk about the high stakes. Billy Joe Saunders himself said that if I can't beat the caliber of fighter that he is, meaning Chris Eubank Jr., that I'm going to retire. Now will I retire? Ha 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 This American knows how Frank Warren works. Long story short, he ain't going nowhere. You know, like, I'll be honest, like, you know, it's fucked up that he said it, but he ain't going nowhere. But, like, listen, it's selling the fight. 100,000 pounds will be going to the charity of the loser. Well, of the winner, basically. So you think of how much is like, a lot of money in that fight. Because if you look at it, it's an undercard, but it's a big undercard. It could be a big domestic fight. Now, I'm not going to be stupid. I'm not going to say, well, it could probably sell out Wembley, but it's a big fight. When you look at the main event, Tyson Fury versus Derek Chisora too, and that's for our WBO title shot against Vladimir Klitschko, you got this fight right here that really everybody's buying the tickets to see. That's the one that's on November the 29th, 2014. Nathan uh, Cleverly versus uh, Bellew 
his own November 22nd. Yeah, at one point in time, they was flip-flop, but Derek Chisora, long story short, got injured. Alexander Ustinov stepped in. Alexander Ustinov is very good. Tyson Fury basically bitched up long star, and he's like, oh, I'm not going to get into it. I look at it like this. Listen, Chris Eubank Jr. has got a mean, mean attack. But does that attack stay consistent in round seven? Let's say round six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, and then eleven and twelve. Is he going to be doing all that? Would he be doing in the ring? We'll be saying now, because that's the way we know him. So we don't know him really as a fighter. What is his style? What does he do? Because all he does is play with his opponents. Because they're nobodies. I'm sorry, and it's crazy because listen, be honest with you. I don't call fighters bums. Go look at my videos. You never hear me call, not one. Oh, you can go back. I call Will Rosinski, Kelly Pavlik versus Will Rosinski. I call Will Rosinski a bum. That was the last fighter I called a bum. I may say fans say he's a bum. I may say people are saying, you know, but you will never hear me say, yeah, this bum. Nah, nah, nah. That's not how, nah, nah, nah. Because I do believe anyone who gets in the ring, you know, like, you're not no bum. You're going in there, like, you're trying to, like, either you getting beat up or you're beating somebody up. Like, it's like, you're not no, you're getting back. Come on. Come on. Like, you want to go home at night all beat up and fucked up? Nah. So, I say this. Billy Joe has the skills. Billy Joe is in Spain right now. He's got a nutritionist. He's got a nutritionist and a, um, and a uh, strength and conditioning coach. He need these things because... He is known through his domestic career over there, of course, um, for having issues with endurance. His last fight against uh, Blaman Blada Moore, I forgot. Uh, see, I don't be knowing these guys' names, and it's not. It, it's saying that you got this, which should be a small fight. They're fighting for a European title, which should be a small fight that has this magnitude. So here in the United States, it would be like, I'm trying to figure out two prospects. Like a Jesse Vargas versus, I'm like, listen, like for this fight to have this much hype around it, like it's, 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 it's big news because if Chris Eubank Jr. loses, it's like basically, now listen to me, basically his career is somewhat over. Now listen to what I'm saying here. Now listen to what I'm saying. Somewhat over it's like, oh, he was doing all that dumbass shit. Ain't nobody scared of you now. Billy Joe, however, he would lose to a pressure fighter. Everybody, like, okay, well, Billy Joe has a problem with pressure fighters. But for Eubank to be like that, basically, he's not living off his father's name, but his father's name carry his father's name carries him so far. If he loses, it's hot. Listen. If he loses, it's high stakes. Like, and that's why, as this American, and when I cover every single major fight live, trust me, I know the magnitude of this fight. And I'm going to be covering this fight live. I, I'm going to be covering this fight live. I'm Tea Street Controversy. This is Tea Street Controversy Live with Real Combat Media. I've had a good day. That's why I'm so hyper. I've had a good day. I'm a little tired. As you know, I've been sick for the last couple of days. Voice is a little messed up. But I cover boxing. Every single major fight live, whether it's overseas or whether it's here. And I want, listen, if I can have, I don't care that if when an HBO or a Showtime fight come on, that during that time, the whole Box Nation screen is black. I don't care. They do that, for example, when the Philadelphia 76ers play. If it's on Comcast Sportsnet, the network that broadcasts it in Philadelphia, if the fight, I mean, if, if, if it's supposed to be on, if it's on NBA TV, like as one of their, as one of their um, games, then it'll be blacked out for the, I don't care if you black out the HBO and the Showtime fights, I want to be able to see them overseas fights. I want Box Nation over here something. And I know financially it's going to be a problem at the beginning, but, but it's going to be one of those situations where, where kind of like Joe Frazier. Where he had brought this uh, this land like all these years ago, and I don't I, I forgot the exact story, but long story short, that land is worth like millions and millions of dollars right now. When he ah, my phone my phone cut. Long story short, 
we need something over here where we can watch these other fighters. It's going to help out the overseas fighters as far as, listen, I'm an American. It's like y'all can say, oh, the American fighters, but y'all get to see our fights on Box Nation. Y'all get to see the Showtime and the HBO fights and then all y'all domestic fights as far as um, the UK and then the fights in Russia and, you know, Bulgaria, all those places over here. We're restricted to American fights and whatever fights that certain networks will pick up. Like stuff like Carl Frotch, you know, every now and then Vladimir Klitschko fights. Um, Tony Bell, you unless he came back because he came over here for the dynasty, you know, stuff like that. But y'all get the, the, you know, y'all get all of it. Me, I got to go through hell and high water to see some of these fights sometime. And people say, oh, you can just buy the Box Nation's God Sports online. Hello, we got American currency, motherfucker. Like, I've been thinking, like, what is, like, hello, and I don't, I'm, I'm not messing with no Bitcoin. No way. My bad. T-Street Controversy. T-Street Controversy Love.